Dorito and Lucha Cabre here. Today we're going to show you how to break in your Predator 212 overhead valve, fully equipped with horizontal shaft. This will be very important later on, so make sure you keep a note of it. Now then, let's get on to it, shall we? First thing to do is get this beast out of the box. So let's open it up and see what we got inside, shall we? Right on top are the directions. Make sure you read them. Obviously, they're important. You also got a special tool with this. It's to remove the spark plug. This may be useful later to get the broken pieces of your engine out after you grenade this thing. Now then, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. You take it out of the box, and you put it on the side here, and there you have it. Obviously, before use, you must put gas in it. We'll remember that later. Also, you got to remember these instructions too. They are also important. On the end here, you have a protective coating over your horizontal shaft. I told you it would come into play later on. This is where it happens. You can remove this before starting. This also comes equipped with your keyway. Don't throw that away, just a protective coating. This is very important for steps later on. So we'll hold that safe right here. All right, guys, now what we need to do is fill it up with oil. You'll need a small funnel so you don't make a mess. I'm really good at making messes. I'm a messy kind of guy, see? So, we get the Super Tech oil also. Super Tech, it's like a tech with a cape. It's pretty super. What we need to do is first remove the fill plug. It's on the side here. You just unscrew it. Remember, we'll screw it back in later. So put it to the side. We'll open our oil. And as per the instructions that you read earlier, we can now fill the crankcase with oil. Now it's time to take the funnel out and check the level with your dipstick. <laughs> he said dipstick. <laughs> All right, if you can see it just about at the threads, that's where the level should be. But to be perfect, you got to check it like such. Screw it in. Doesn't have to be tight. But just enough to seat the dipstick. And then, look, your level's full. We can now reinsert the dipstick and make sure... It is tight, because everybody loves a tight dipstick. And also, people, don't forget, recycle! All right, now, the next step is to put some gas into this beast. So what we do is get our gas. What makes the world run. Remove the filler cap. And insert fuel into the tank. That's why they call it a fuel tank, people. It holds the fuel. After putting a little bit in there, doesn't have to be much. It's not a very big engine. We can remove, we can replace the cap. As such, once the cap is on tight, we can make our preliminary checks. Walk around the engine and make sure everything's clear. It's clear, so there's only one thing left to do now before we start this up, and that's to loosen up the throttle. It comes pre-tightened from the factory, so we need to take our 10 millimeter socket on an extension and go right down into the middle onto the top of the linkage where it pivots and we need to loosen that up just give it a couple little turns until the throttle arm is loose then we can make sure that our throttle is free and moves back and forth without any binding 
Then we can turn our fuel on. And we can turn our choke on. Now we're ready to start this beast. Let's see what happens, shall we? The fuel switch is in the run position. Otherwise, it will never run. Okay, now we're ready to pull start this thing and make sure everything works and break it in properly. Let's see what happens. Well, it runs. Let me make sure that it accelerates and that everything is functioning properly. It looks like it's doing a good job of doing what it does. So let's let this run for about 10 minutes and break it in, shall we? Now that we've let it run for 10 minutes, got everything circulated and warm, we can shut it off and change the oil. We brought our engine back in, we can drain the oil, okay? We'll take our previously used 10 millimeter socket and we'll come over to the side where the drain plug is. As you can see, we've already set up a drain pan to catch the oil. We don't want it to go all over our floor and slip and fall, do we? No. So, let's remove the drain plug. And start the oil flowing. Be careful, this will be hot. I tried to warn you that the Looch is a messy man. But look what we have in there. That oil is sparkly and shiny. I think we found gold. Or at least silver. This is why we run this thing first. To get all that out of there and to make sure none of that circulates through the engine and does harmful damage. You could definitely smell the difference too. Smells like hot oil. Now that we've got most of the oil out of there, we can reinstall our drain plug. And tighten as necessary. Make sure you do not over tighten. If you remember, we have about a half a quart of oil left over. A half a quart. That's... 16 fluid ounces, people. Remember this. This is an educational show for you. What we can do is reuse that and refill our crankcase. So we repeat the procedure that we did last time. Install the funnel and pour in the remainder of the oil. Now that we've installed the rest of the oil, we can put our drain plug back in. And let's take a look at this oil real quick that we took out of here. Look at all the shiny particles in there. This is why we need to break it in. Get all that material out of there before we put it to hard use. Huh, he said hard use. All right. Well, as you can see, that's a break-in procedure for our 212 gas engine. So, next time, we'll show you how to put this into your cart and even have more fun than we just did, kids. Thanks again for watching Dorito and the Lucha Cabra. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Go ahead and comment. Rock on! <laughs>